A portion of this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. No matter what you think about Apple as a company, it's pretty hard to deprive them of praise for these. They are ubiquitous now, and they're arguably no longer even best in class. But released in 2016, the AirPods were the first truly wireless earbuds that didn't suck. Not only did they stay connected reliably to the playback device, but they also perfected a number of features that the rest of the industry has since tried to copy, like instant pairing and a convenient battery meter. But what if I told you that many of the features that set the AirPods apart from the rest had already been done before, nearly a decade prior? By Apple. This is the iPhone Bluetooth headset. And if it seems like it was released to very little fanfare, that's because it was. After all, it had to follow this announcement. So, we're gonna reinvent the phone. But this product was, in a sense, greater than the sum of its parts. And in order to show you that, I have ordered one, new in box, from Germany. Never opened. Or at least that's what the eBay seller said, but that's not true because this bottom sticker here is unfortunately not original. However, the headset still looks unused, and that's frankly what matters most. I remember from college Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At minimum, we require food, water, and sealed inbox vintage Apple products. Then, safety and physical security. Today's sponsor, Simply Safe, helps me feel secure. Simply Safe is giving you early access to all of their Black Friday deals, 50% off or more on their award-winning home security. Now, you may know that we just moved into a new office and Simply Safe's easy DIY install process made securing this building a breeze. We installed the whole system in less than an hour from start to finish, from door and window sensors to deadbolts to smoke and CO2 detectors to temperature sensors, cameras, doorbells. There is a flurry of stuff, including the new wireless outdoor security camera that comes with a 140 degree field of view, eight times zoom, built in spotlight with night color vision and two way audio to speak to whomever is on the other side of the camera whoever's on your property. Now, my favorite is this water leak sensor, which notified us almost immediately about a leak that sprung from our OR system that could have done a lot of damage had we not caught it in advance. My office is now professionally monitored and protected from more than just thieves 24 seven for a fraction of the cost of a more traditional home security system. I am especially appreciative that the keypad, it allows you to control the whole system without needing to open the app, though I will admit the app is quite good. Save 50% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their biggest sale of the year. Visit simplysafe.com slash snazzy labs to learn more. All right, it is now time to unbox this, if not for the first time ever, at least the first time in many, many, many years. Now, that version that you saw announced in the keynote is the same headset hardware-wise as what I have in this box, but this is the second revision, so to speak. The original one that released in 2007 with the original iPhone um, came in a much larger box. It was actually the same size as the iPhone box itself. And it came with uh, something that's not in this version, a dock where you could charge your iPhone and the headset at the same time. This version ditched the dock when the iPhone 3G came out and just provided, well, the following. We've got the headset right there. Oh, 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 oh baby. That looks so good. Many, many years later, but that looks fantastic. We've got a pull tab here. And if I pull this up, the headset comes out. Ooh, this is uh, probably new. We've got two brand new foam ear cushions and we've got some documentation. It says iPhone Bluetooth headset, manual de utilizar. Oh yeah, so I bought this from Germany. Maybe there's no English version. It probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's not English. That's not English. That's not English. I don't think there's an English version because <laughs> this is purchased internationally. And I don't speak any of these languages, unfortunately. You've got your one year limited warranty, which hilariously is in English. <laughs> and then uh, you've got your EU 
Declaration of Conformity. Ah, oh, that's a special. You don't get that in the United States. Beautiful. Okay. Moving on to the headset itself, you've got, as is always the case, um, pretty clever packaging. There's this little pull tab that holds the headset in place. And you can probably only do this once. So let's get it on camera. Oh, baby. That piece of plastic was threaded through this fantastic looking uh, plastic clamshell. And the headset now kind of falls out of its package. And there it is. And holy smokes, this is not very big. I mean, it's not an AirPod, but it does not look old. That's actually kind of like a thing of beauty. Wait, what the hell? Where's the cable? There's no charging cable in here. What am I gonna do? I can't charge it. Frick! I got scammed. They gave me two brand new ear cushions. This was in its original packaging and there's no way they threaded this back through. That was like a one-time peel. They just pilfered the cable. includes iPhone Bluetooth headset and Bluetooth travel cable. It was included, just not in my box. Ah, oh, that's annoying. I'm calling the police. Hello? Arrest that man. <laughs> Moments later. <laughs> Suck it, you stupid German eBay scammer. You might have tried to sabotage the first part of the video, but I'm not going to let you sabotage the rest. All I needed was a good eBay seller, uh, $10, and the weekend. Yeah, this thing was 10 bucks. It shipped over the weekend from California, and it looks great. Now, this is the dock that came with the original variant of this that shipped alongside the 2007 iPhone. So the original iPhone docks here, and this would dock right next to it. And I presume you dock it this way. Let's plug it in and get it charged. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's magnetic. That's so cool. Okay, let's let it charge. In order to get things going, I'm going to need my first generation iPhone. Uh, wait, hang on. Let me put it back together real quick. Okay, it's here, but we have a problem. I forgot that I restored this like a year ago, and so the phone is not activated. Uh, it's asking for a SIM card, and so maybe I can pop this SIM card tray out. Okay, I'll grab my current iPhone. And uh, yes, there's a lot of fingerprints on it. Leave me alone, okay? Nothing in this video is going right. <laughs> Nothing in this video is going right, I say. And uh, yeah, well, look at that. SIM cards have gotten a lot smaller. Uh, oh, I have an idea. Okay, I've got my adapter. I've got my little SIM card here. There we go. We should be able to fit this inside the tray and that we can. And now I just have to slide it into the phone. Maybe. Am I doing it backwards? No. There we go. Ah, <laughs> finally, things are going my way. Well, that was a lie. I plugged it in iTunes and it says that it can't activate the phone and that's because, duh, hello, Apple's activation servers are down and have been for a number of years. Furthermore, even if Apple's were up, AT&T's 2G network, that no longer works. And so there's no way for this to connect to a cellular network anyway. Uh, luckily, there is a workaround because this phone is pretty old and it's going to involve a MacBook or in our case, a mod book. If you have not seen the video yet that we made about this Modbook Pro, you definitely need to check it out. It is a crazy story and a fascinating device. Okay, I have got the laptop. I am going to plug the USB cable in 
And then I am going to plug the iPhone into the computer. And there we go. iTunes is going to launch, but we actually don't want iTunes launched. So I am going to try and quit this. And oh boy, there we go. Quit iTunes. Okay. I am now going to open a very old jailbreak called Black Rain. This was originally developed by Geohot, the uh, hacker that uh, now runs, uh, or is part of the company Comet AI, which is pretty funny. Um, but what I can do is take my iPhone right here and I just push make it rain and then watch this baby. It's gonna put the iPhone into recovery mode, it's going to unlock the bootloader and it's going to jailbreak the device, which will allow us to bypass the activation. So <laughs> there's this beautiful mug right there. <laughs> Ah, there it says, enjoy your jailbroken iPhone. The jailbreak is done once the device reboots. If this was the simplest jailbreak ever, please go to blackrain.com and donate for your support of future development. <laughs> should, we, should we donate? I can't believe the website's still up. It's actually kind of amazing. It's great because this is a handy tool. Why am I using this device? You might be wondering. Well, this is a 32-bit app, so it doesn't work on any modern Mac or any modern version of Mac OS, I should say. All right, and it's done. That was easy. Oh, and there's the Black Rain jailbreak. I can push that again, and that will install Cydia and the other repositories that I would need, but I don't want to do that because that's not what this video is about. <laughs> the video is about this. Okay, it was charging for a few hours. It was orange and then turned green, and then it turned off. So um, we're ready to pair it. We'll grab our 2007 iPhone right here. We've got our custom molded dock, which is way better than a cable and it should just instantly pair, which was one of the flagship features of this device. So let's put this in, the phone to charge, and then this headset will show right, supposed to show right up based on videos I've seen on YouTube. I don't know, I never owned one of these. Huh, let's unplug this and then just plug it back in. Please don't be broken. <laughs> Nothing can go right in this video. Okay, hold on, let's. Let's try order of operations. Put the iPhone in first, okay? Then this. The status LED is not even coming on anymore. It was orange. Did you get B-roll of that? So we didn't even film it, no. <laughs> Trust me, it was working. Okay, this first. Frick. Meanwhile. Okay, adventure time. Uh, so, that's not good. What are you doing? Oh, three point turn, okay. Keep going. You got it. This is so much better than driving yourself to future. Hey, I did get it in the lines. Yeah, we're burning through my tires. Where are we going? Wait. Uh, okay, so what was that whole thing about? <laughs> this is the Apple USB Super Drive, and it is a $79 way to illustrate my point. <laughs> this thing was released in 2008 alongside the MacBook Air, and they still sell it in the Apple Store today. Um, I don't know that there is an older SKU, an older product available in an Apple Store today. Maybe the 30-pin uh, to VGA cable but I can't think of anything other than that. Here it is, 13 years old. I'm gonna pull it out of the box. This specific one is probably not 13 years old, but you know what I mean. We've got USB-A on one end that is covered in plastic, which they haven't been doing. <laughs> this might be 13 years old. They haven't been doing that in forever. And then on the other side, we've got uh, plastic galore. This is a very large box for a very small accessory. Look at this. It's got a plastic clamshell. Like this is an old product. This is not the eco-friendly packaging Apple uses now. 
And uh, yeah, it's basically just a DVD drive. Now you're wondering why would you buy this over a $20 DVD drive on Amazon? Uh, great question. I do not have an answer for you in that regard. But my point is that this is still sold today in the Apple Store. It is a 13 year old product and it has specific features within Mac OS that still function today. And I have a feeling that the Bluetooth headset is very similar in that regard. And this, the iPhone Bluetooth headset is no exception, or at least in theory, I don't know, mine doesn't work. But for people who do have them that function, they have continued to work for years and years and years. Now you might think, well, duh, Quinn, it's just a Bluetooth 1.5 device. That's not special. It worked with Android phones back then and would continue to work with other devices now. And that's true, but it did have those special Apple features that continue to work today, including the instant pairing, and more importantly, the battery status widget. There are reports that as late as the latest version of iOS, people have these, they still work, I'm not so lucky, and they continue to display the battery status inside of iOS, and that is so cool. And it just goes to show that Apple cares about their accessories and the longevity of them, despite their high price tag, and despite not always being the best value. They work for the long haul, and I think that's pretty cool. But let's talk about why this product failed, because it's kind of hard to imagine, but back in the day, people used their phones for calling people, voice calls. <laughs> and believe it or not, these little headsets, they were wildly popular, but they were largely bulky, ugly, and they weren't particularly elegant. So in a vacuum, the iPhone Bluetooth headset should have launched to much applause, but it released at the perfectly wrong time because a new entrant into the market just wiped the floor with everyone. That's a leaf, later known as Jawbone. The company entered the consumer market with their first product in 2007, but they were not novices to communication devices. They had a very lucrative contract with DARPA, which is the US military's uh, research arm, and they had been around for the better part of a decade. The Jawbone, their first consumer product, launched a few months prior to the iPhone Bluetooth headset, and it featured a multi-microphone array for improved audio fidelity and noise isolation. There were bone conduction pickups, superb battery life, and it wasn't designed for a specifically new smartphone launched in 2007 that frankly hadn't moved very many units, the iPhone. So the iPhone Bluetooth headset, despite its launch price of 129, which was absolutely on the high side, was not the primary reason for its failure. It did drop to $99, which was almost price competitive, but uh, you know that was just too little too late. The Jawbone and other market entrants did more for less money. Despite the cool stuff like auto pairing and battery status indicators, etc., those would actually disappear from 2009 when the device was continued, clear up until the release of the AirPods over seven years later. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, it doesn't matter. That other button doesn't work anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.